All right, everyone, today we're gonna to talk about how the key holder is cut out and put together. So assuming you've finished your drawings, we've already talked about V-carved and it's all tool pathed out, I want you to see the process creating the final product. So with this jig, I can just drop in the nine by 10 and then pull this tight on the corner and with those clamps, hold it in place so that the machine can make any V carves or any profile cuts into this piece of wood. So the bits we use for these projects, we've used this one before. This one here is the V-carving bit with the 60 degree end. This one here is a 1 8 inch end mill, which has just got very straight edges. And you can see has a slight angle you can see that as I rotate this, this is the edge. So this edge here is the actual cutting blade. It's not like a drill bit where the tip does the cutting, the sides of it actually do the cutting. And these over here are quarter inch bits that we'll use for the profiles. We have a straight bit which is just like a standard looking router bit. As you can see, the blade is just perfectly straight. We have a single edged spiral. It only has one edge that does the, the spiral. This one spiral goes the whole way up. And this has two. So you can kind of see on the end, see there's only that one edge that does the cutting. And on this one, there's two. So that, and, and when you see how they rotate, you can see this looks like it's spiraling up. So when it's down, it will actually push the wood down. Let's talk more about that on the whiteboard. You losing focus on me here, pal? There we go. Okay, when we're talking about profile cuts on a project, there's a few things we have to specify. Depth, the bit, and the line. Okay, so first let's talk about the depth of the cut. Just like in the V carving, you need to, if this wood is three quarters of an inch thick, you don't wanna go through the wood because that would go into the table below the wood on the CNC machine. So we need to tell it how far in to go. But we need to, when we're doing a profile, we have to cut through the wood. So when we specify the depth of cut, with a V-carve, it's always cutting between the lines, but in a profile cut, it will go as far in as you tell the machine to go. And we wanna go just far enough to get through the wood and we're gonna cut the table a teeny bit, which is why we have a sacrificial piece on the table that allows us to cut. If you notice, there's a bunch of cuts in the table. That allows us to go through the wood, but not dig so far into the table that we damage anything. So we need to tell the machine how far in to go. And a lot of times that depends on the, the size of the wood. The bit will have a smooth part to the bit, and then you'll have your, your spirally. Now, this is the cutting area this part, and that can vary in length depending on the type of bit you get. Now, if you wanna only go through three quarters of an inch of wood, the bit doesn't have, be to have to be that big. But in larger pieces of wood, you gotta have a much larger bit, and therefore, the diameter here would also increase. So if you're only gonna go down three quarters of an inch, we can use a quarter inch bit. But if we wanted to go down like two or three inches, we would need a much bigger in diameter bit for size comparison. My drawings are awful, I'm sorry. So this would be much larger maybe like a half an inch in diameter, and this is a quarter inch in diameter, depending on how deep into the wood we need to go. Get rid of this. Now we need to talk about the bit. Like I showed you on the table, you could have a bit that has one cutting loop, 
one spiral, or you could have one that has two spirals. Two spirals, two edges, will cut more than a single edge. So you have to vary the speed of the machine based on how many edges. So if we're using a two edge or a single edge, that will determine some of the settings we use on the machine. Other difference, in addition to the length and diameter, is the direction of the spiral. So you could have a bit, when you rotate it, will look like it's screwing down, like a screw would. That's gonna push down on the wood as it cuts, and it's also gonna push the wood chips down. So like when you drill with a drill, the, the, the flutes in the drill bit pull the wood chips out of the hole and out towards the drill, towards you. You can also get router bits that do the same thing. So it'll always spin clockwise, and then it will either pull the wood chips, in this case, you have your wood down here. As it works through the wood, it's gonna pull the wood chips out of the hole and into the dust collector, which means you can go a lot faster. However, because it's pulling the wood, it could lift your project up off the table, and that would not be good, it could destroy everything. So you have to really make sure it's secure to the table if you're gonna use a bit that pulls up. And if you have a bit that pushes down, it's gonna push the wood chips down into the hole. And it's not gonna like, it's not gonna ruin it, but it won't cut as efficiently as if it was pulling out. So therefore, when you have a down spiral, we go a little bit, we have different speeds than if we were to have an up spiral. You understand the difference? So we have differing edges and we have differing spirals. Let's get rid of this. So the last thing is the line. If your project, if your project for a profile cut, let's say in the example of the house that we're gonna do, it's a bad sketch, we have this outer line. There's a few options that we can do here. We can cut on the outside of the line where the router bit will follow the edge of the line and leave it there. We can cut on the line where the center of the bit will be on the line that we have there or we can cut inside the line where it will follow the inside track of the line. Now, when would you use these? So in this case, because I have this outer line here and I wanna keep it, I wanna see that line, I would cut on the outside of the line. And what that would do, it, was, it would preserve the, the farthest point on that line. But in the case of the key with that little chamfered edge, which is that angle from the V-carb, that was on the line so that it allowed the edge of the wood to have this V like this. So that was the V carving bit. This would be outside the line. This would be on the line. And this would be inside the line. And if we cut on the inside of the line on those designs, we'd lose the whole V carve. If we cut on the line, we get a little of that slope. And if we cut outside the line, we get this little part here. And then we can also add, let's, let's use a different example. The one that we did that looks like just a key, right? That key, I didn't really have a place I wanted to put the hook, so I wanted to put that shape in an oval. So I drew an oval around this shape, and I left a little space down here for the hook. Now I could use this line as my profile line. I could V-carve this shape in here, and then I had this outer line to be my profile line and I could cut on or on the outside of this oval and it would preserve, let's say that's the bit from the top view, it would preserve this shape and it would cut out that oval. Now you can see it did the profile cut around the edge. I still have this little tiny thing to take off, to sand off, but it profiled the shape. And if you look at the back, what's holding it together is these tabs. Those were the tabs in V-carve that we set up. They're quarter inch by quarter inch. And what I'm gonna do is just break those away and then the whole thing will pop out. So now you can see the tabs still have a little wood on the end. It just can be knocked off and then sanded. 
And then with my sandpaper, I can just sand off those little extras, sand the edges. See that? Almost like it's almost like it's not even there. Nice and smooth. See how quickly with that piece of wood it just knocks that right down. So now the back looks good, pretty smooth, and I will do the front just to clean up these corners a little bit. Now similar to my other one, I want to measure, so I got like three inches from the E to the edge, so I'll go half an inch, half an inch. I want to measure where those holes are going to go and put the holes in with the screw first before painting. Yeah. So I want to get these in there first. Let's just get it started. And this allows me, after I paint, I'll have the hole there already so I won't have to make a mark with my, make a mark through the paint. So you just gotta push down a little bit with these, you kind of spinning clockwise and push down. And now I can finish sanding the whole front. I can even get rid of that pencil line and make this whole thing nice and smooth because that hole is already there. So those will be there for me when I'm done. So that's the whole process. When you pick up your project, it's gonna still be within the wood with the tabs on it. You'll need to break it out and sand it just like you saw in the video and then you can paint it up. If you put the hooks in before you paint, you'll have those guide holes there. You can just put the screws in, hang it on the wall and you're good to go. Now you've seen the whole process is if you were in the room, there's a few questions below, make sure you answer those and you know the whole process. You'll probably have to refer back to this video after you get your project so that you know how to finish it out. And uh, let's get started.